The film starts at the funeral of a teenage boy named Darren Chan. Everyone is devastated at his loss, but shockingly, it turns out that he is very much alive. In fact, he is seen inside the coffin playing video games. Through a flashback, Darren explains how good his life was going. Darren Chan is a genius student and the pride and joy of his perfect middle class family. The only negative part of his life was his childhood best friend Steve. It is obvious that his friend is very mischievous as a teenager. One day at school, Steve convinces Darren to bunk their history class. The two then head to the rooftop, where Steve destroys several light bulbs by throwing stones at them. He then challenges his friend to do the same. But right then, their history teacher overhears a commotion coming from the roof. As a result, the boys are called and their respective parents are informed. Hearing this incident, Darren's parents got very angry on him and they scolded him ruthlessly and also ground him for two whole months. Darren's parents dislike Steve. They often used to say, Darren, we don't like your friend at all. Furthermore, they forbid him from staying friends with Steve, citing that he is a bad influence, but Darren dislikes it at all. He never wanted to break the friendship with Steve, so he tells Steve that his parents are saying to not have a friendship with him. Upon hearing this, Steve replies, not a good idea, and both begin to argue on this topic. Then a car drives beside them, and a poster is thrown toward them from it. And it is the poster for the circus show, which was going to be held tonight. The flyer claims that it is held once every 500 years. They begin to concentrate on that poster as they are ready to move there. Then the school site is shown where Darren is focusing on this poster in his book instead of attending his class. Then the teacher approaches there and he begins to look at the poster while he is snatching it. Then the teacher gives them a warning against attending the show because of its illegal nature, but they nevertheless decide to go to the circus. Late at night, Darren and Steve sneak out of their homes and head to the circus on their bicycles. It's revealed that the boys have peculiar interests. Darren is a big fan of spiders while Steve is obsessed with vampires. However, reaching there, they start to purchase their tickets, then a tiny creature bites their hands. Then a man meets with them and starts to talk. Then they enter the show where several creatures and the characters are are being seen. At first, a wolf man appears, and his presence scares everyone. Mr. Tall directs him towards a woman in the audience and to everyone's horror. The wolf man tears off her hands, but before anyone can react, the woman's hand regenerates, and she walks towards the stage as if nothing has happened. Mr. Tall then introduces her as a Kormalim, a member of the freak show. Next up is Alexander Ribs, a man with no apparent ribs. Gerta, teeth is the third member and she can surprisingly break anything with her strong teeth. Ramis to bellies, her partner can eat everything due to his two bellies. He even swallows a tricycle hole and spits it out in one piece. Then a beautiful freak named Madame Truska calls Darren on a stage and asks him to be her assistant. However, when he touches his face, she senses something forbidden inside of him and backs away. As the performance continues, Madame Truska wows the audience by growing facial hair in an instant. But after her act, she unexpectedly calls for the show to be packed up, despite her request. The next act, Larkin crisply takes the stage with his spider partner, Okta. He impresses the crowd with a dance performance while playing an instrument. Steve thinks, seeing him as he is a vampire. Then the spider of that man comes on Darren. Darren likes that spider too much. Larkin also comes after him. He says to both of them, you are thinking wrong, that vampires are also present today, there is no one in Empire. Then Darren's teacher approaches there and he had also brought police with him because he did not want this show may be performed here. Steve and Darren run from there. Darren reaches into the room of Lawton while running. The person full name is Lawton Cripsley. Darren hides in a cupboard while lifting his spider. At the same, he also reaches there, who is talking with another person. He tells him that a tiny creature has come back and it will also end us accompanying with his companions. Then Steve enters their room and says to Larton, I know that you are a vampire. It will be better to turn me into a vampire. 
Larton says, Oh, it is a matter. First of all, I have to taste your blood, that you deserve it or not. Larton dislikes the taste of blood as he tastes it. He says that there is evil in your blood. You can never be a good vampire. Steve gets angry on this and he threatens him. I will take revenge from you. Then Larton does not like it at all. Afterwards, Larton moves ahead to check his spider. When Darren realizes that his life may be in danger, so he comes outside to take that spider. He is hit with a car. This is the same car which had been seen in the beginning of the movie, which had thrown the poster of the circus. Darren gets in that car and a man in the vehicle takes on of Darren's hair because he had to conduct a research. Then they get off Darren. Next day, Darren brings the spider into the school. Steve also catches the side and says to him, show it to me. The Darren makes a cage of the spider from him. Then it is dropped down from his hand. Spider comes outside and starts to wander throughout the school. So the kids are feeling afraid due to this. Darren is also afraid that spider may not be crushed under his foot. And he he tries to control it playing flute. Then his flute is also falling and begins to come under his foot. Meantime, the spider bites on the mouth of Steve. Consequently, Steve falls down, knocking out, and Darren immediately goes to Lawton, so he may bring any type of medicine, a dose through which Steve may restore his consciousness. Now Darren tells Lawton the details. Reaching to him, Lawton becomes very furious, and he says, You committed wrong, stealing my spider, but I cannot forbid you if you are in difficulty. You have to save the life of your friend, so you will have to sacrifice one thing. Darren says, which type of sacrifice? Lawton tells that you will have to be my assistant because I am a vampire and you will have to exchange your blood with me to be my assistant. After this, you will only work for me. You will not have any relation with the world. Darren begins to think, but he had also to save the life of his friend in reality. The both shake their hands. After this, Darren is turned into the half vampire. Now he is vampire's assistant. Now the deal fulfilled here. Now it is the turn that Darren carried out the same what was worded by Lawton. So they go to recover. Steve pouring the antidote in him. Then Lawton says to Darren, That time has arrived when you will leave your family and this world. In the same way, he fractures the neck of Darren and he pushes him down because vampires don't breathe. Everyone thinks that Darren has been died as being knocked down after falling, and Lawton wanted to do the same. So Wal end their contact with him, thinking it. Now there is a funeral ceremony of Darren. At Darren's funeral, all his friends, teachers and family pay their respects while Darren is alive and well inside the coffin playing games on his phone. The same night, Lawton digs up the grave and gets Darren out of the coffin, but before they can leave, Murloff arrives out of nowhere and ambushes them. Fortunately, Lawton fights him off and manages to subdue him temporarily. Following the close call, he takes Darren to the freak show campgrounds, where they meet a girl named Rebecca. Meanwhile, Steve is grief-stricken by his friend's death. As a result, he distances himself from society and becomes a maniac. When the pain becomes unbearable, one day he contemplates ending it all. But just as he is about to commit the unthinkable, Mr. Tiny arrives there and stops him. He mentions that he is his error about Steve's unfortunate life and his obsession with all things vampire. He then offers him a chance to become a vampiness. It turns out Tiny and Murlaf are vampires, and they are a different race of vampires who, unlike Lawton and the others, murder humans to feed on the blood. It also reveals that vampires and the normal vampires are arch enemies and they don't see eye to eye. As Steve hears everything in disbelief, Mr. Tiny disclosed something even more shocking. He says that Darren is alive and happy in the other world, something which Steve had always dreamed of and always aspired to be. The revolution makes the latter angry, so without a second thought, he accepts the offer. Meanwhile, Darren slowly gets comfortable in the freak, comp ground with the other freaks. He starts to train himself and helps others in their duties. One day, Darren goes through the pictures of his old life and decides to give Steve a call. But before he can do so, Lawton arrives there, snatches the phone from Darren and breaks it. 
That night, Mr. Tiny visits the freak camp to talk with Lawton and Mr. Tall about Darren. It turns out the boy has a special innate power so Mr. Tiny asks them to hand him over. Despite being enemies, a diplomatic Mr. Tall politely tells him that he will think about it. Afterwards, Lawton instructs Darren not to leave the camp as it is not safe for him anymore. He then begins to train Darren so that he can handle himself if he is ever in trouble. At first, the boy fails to lay a single hand on Lawton but as his training progress, his skills and strength develops. On the other hand, Morla turns Steve into a Bambanis, which gives him unreal powers. The boy also becomes more evil and his first victim turns out to be none other than his history teacher. Meanwhile, as Darren begins to feel hungry, he starts craving for fresh blood. To remedy this, Lawton takes him to a nearby farm and sedates a man. He says that vampires never kill people, they just borrow their blood. However, despite his hunger, Darren cannot bring himself to do it, so they return back to the camp. Shortly after, the pricks peaceful come ground is suddenly invaded by a group of ruthless vampires. Chaos ensues as the two sides engage in a brutal fight, resulting in a lot of bloodshed. It becomes clear that the vampires are searching for Darren, and soon enough they find him hiding inside a custom room with Rebecca. The vampires attack Darren, and the fierce brawl freaks out. But fortunately, thanks to the timely arrival of Latin, Mr. Toll and the other freaks, the fight is eventually broken off and Darren is saved from certain doom. However, when the dust settles, it is revealed that Murlaf has kidnapped Rebecca. The following morning, Darren sets off to find her as he blames himself for the entire incident. In the meantime, Mr. Tiny kidnaps his family. After a while, Darren arrives at his home and finds it empty. He then notices a flyer on the table, inviting him to the circus. It was the same place where some roses were seen in the beginning and Darren has to go there because he had to rescue his friend. Now Latin is also informed about it, so he leaves to rescue Darren, but Darren has reached there till that time. There is also the leader of Hemphan is there, there is also Steve. They say to Darren, we have your family and also your friend, whom will you like to save? Then Darren says, is this questions to ask? Darren catches Steve in anger, but Steve pushes him. Darren is falling away because he is not sucked the blood. He has no power like the vampires, even like the human beings. Because he is hungry and feedable, Larton soon arrives there, who begins to fight with the leader and vampires. Now Darren's friend moves to place with him after freeing herself. That girl offers Darren, you can suck my blood. But Darren says to her, no, I cannot do this nor I'll do. That girl reveals to him, I know you are a good man and this knowledge for me is enough. You can suck my blood. So Darren sucks her little blood and generates power in him. Now Darren reaches that place where that leader and Steve are assaulting that Lawton. They have weakened him. But Lawton stabs the knight into the tummy of the vampire's leader lifting it. He's killed, suffering from pain. Then the bad man also appears there who is feeling excitement. And Steve was also happy at the place. Darren gets angry from him that he deceived them without knowing anything. Steve will also turn into an evil man like the leader of his survive. Darren moves forward to kill Steve, but Batman calls Steve to him. He says to Steve, you are the new leader of Vampanesis. From now, he transforms ex-leader into a small creature. He then asks the two boys to come with him. Amazed by his power, Steve immediately obliges, but Darren doesn't. On the other side, Lawton is seen who assists Darren. Now he can release his family back because he had also understood that nothing is more important than a family. So the people may turn to evil men like Steve. When they go far from the family, Darren's family had been released. So Lawton hypnotizes Darren's family so that their recent memory is wiped off. This way, they won't remember the supernatural events that look placed right in front of their eyes. In the end, it is seen that Darren also attends the circus show. It means he will also meet Lawton, living with family. The movie also ends on the scene. Thanks for watching.